In Book 2 of the Law of One, the nature of each of the densities or dimensions of this octave of creation is explored in detail, with special emphasis given to how evolution from our third density to the fourth density is accomplished. The relationship between the densities of creation and the energy centers of the body is investigated, so that each experience can be used as a catalyst for growth to balance and crystallize the energy centers or chakras of the student of evolution. Wanderers, sexual energy transfer, the physics of Dewey B. Larson, polarization and consciousness, ritual magic, and the nature and function of the higher self are all explored as they are related to the Law of One. Book 2 contains sessions 27 through 50. Session 27, February 21, 1981. I am Ra, I greet you in the love and light of the one infinite creator I communicate now. Question. This session I thought we would start Book 2 of the Law of One, which will focus on what we consider to be the most important aspect of our being. This, I assume, will be a much more difficult task than the first book. We want to focus on things that are not transient, and as a questioner, I may have difficulty at times. When I do have this difficulty, I fall back on some transient questions simply because I will not be able to formulate what I really need, and I apologize for this. I will try my best to stay on track and eliminate things of no value from the book if they do occur during my questioning. The statement I will make to begin with is, in this density we tend to focus our minds on some transient condition or activity with little regard to its value or use as an aid or a tool for growth and understanding of the true and undistorted essence of the creation of which we are an integral part. I will attempt, by starting at the beginning of creation, to establish an overview of ourselves in the creation, thereby arriving at a more informed viewpoint of what we consider to be reality. It is hoped that this will allow us to participate more effectively in the process of evolution. I would like to start with definitions of words that we have been using that possibly we have not and possibly cannot understand totally. But since the first words that we use are intelligent infinity, I would like for you to define each of these words and give the definition of their combination. Ra, your vibrations of mind complex indicate a query. However, your vibrational sound complex indicate a preference. Please restate. Question, would you define the word intelligent in the context of intelligent infinity? Ra, we shall address the entire spectrum of this question before defining as requested. Your language, using vibrational sound complexes, can be at best an approximation of that which is closer to an understanding, if you will, of the nature of conscious thought. Perceptions are not the same as sound vibration complexes, and the attempt to define will therefore be a frustrating one for you, although we are happy to aid you within the limits of your sound vibration complex. To define intelligent apart from infinity is difficult, for these two vibration complexes equal one concept. It is much like attempting to divide your sound vibration concept, faith, into two parts. We shall attempt to aid you, however. Question. It is not necessary to divide it. The definition of intelligent infinity is sufficient. Could you define that, please? Ra. This is exponentially simpler and less confusing. There is unity. This unity is all that there is. This unity has a potential and kinetic. The potential is intelligent infinity. Tapping this potential will yield work. This work has been called by us intelligent energy. The nature of this work is dependent upon the particular distortion of free will, which in turn is the nature of a particular intelligent energy of kinetic focus of the potential of unity or that which is all. Question. I would like to expand a little on the concept of work. In Newtonian physics, the concept of work is the product of force and distance. I am assuming that the work of which you speak is a much broader term including possibly work and consciousness. Am I correct? Ra, as we use this term, it is universal in application. Intelligent infinity has a rhythm or flow, as of a giant heart beginning with the central sun, as you would think of or conceive of this. The presence of the flow inevitable as a tide of beingness without polarity, without finity, the vast and silent all beating outward, outward, focusing outward and inward, until the focuses are complete. The intelligence or consciousness of foci have reached a state where their, shall we say, spiritual nature or mass calls them inward. 
inward, inward, until all is coalesced. This is the rhythm of reality as you spoke. Question. Then I think I've extracted an important point from this, and that in intelligent infinity, we have work without polarity, or a potential difference does not have to exist. Is this correct? Ra, there is no difference, potential or kinetic, in unity. The basic rhythms of intelligent infinity are totally without distortion of any kind. The rhythms are clothed in mystery, for they are being itself. From this undistorted unity, however, appears a potential in relation to intelligent energy. In this way, you may observe the term to be somewhat two-sided. One use of the term, that being as the undistorted unity, being without any kinetic or potential side. The other application of this term, which we use undifferentiatedly, for lack of other term in the sense of the vast potential tapped into by foci, or focuses of energy we call intelligent energy. Question. I understand that the first distortion of intelligent infinity is a distortion of what we call free will. Can you give me a definition of this distortion? Ra. In this distortion of the law of one, it is recognized that the Creator will know itself. Question. That am I correct in assuming that the Creator then grants for this knowing the concept of total freedom of choice in the ways of knowing? Am I correct? Ra. This is quite correct. Question. This then being the first distortion of the law of one, which I am assuming is the law of intelligent infinity, all other distortions which are the total experience of the creation spring from this. Is this correct? Ra. This is both correct and incorrect. In your illusion, all experience springs from the law of free will or the way of confusion. In another sense, which we are learning, the experiences are this distortion. Question. I will have to think about that and ask questions on it in the next session. So I will now go on to what you have given me as the second distortion, which is the distortion of love. Is this correct? Ra, this is correct. I would like for you to define love in its sense as a second distortion. Ra, this must be defined against the background of intelligent infinity or unity, or the one creator with the primal distortion of free will. The term love then may be seen as the focus, the choice of attack, the type of energy of an extremely, shall we say, high order, which causes intelligent energy to be formed from the potential of intelligent infinity in just such and such a way. This, then, may be seen to be an object rather than an activity by some of your people. And the principle of this extremely strong energy focus, being worshipped as the creator, instead of unity or oneness from which all love emanates. Question. Is there a manifestation of love that we could call vibration? Ra. Again, we reach semantic difficulties. The vibration or density of love or understanding is not a term used in the same sense as the second distortion. Love. The distortion love being the great activator and primal co-creator, of various creations using intelligent infinity. The vibration love being the density in which those who have learned to do an activity called loving without significant distortion, then seek the ways of light or wisdom. Thus, in vibratory sense, love comes into light in the sense of the activity of unity in its free will. Love uses light and has the power to direct light in its distortion. Thus, vibratory complexes recapitulate in reverse the creation in its unity, thus showing the rhythm or flow of the great heartbeat, if you will use this analogy. Question. I will make a statement that I have extracted from the physics of Dewey Larson, which may or may not be close to what we are trying to explain. Larson says that all is motion, which we can take as vibration, and that vibration is pure vibration, and is not physical in any way or in any form or density. And the first product of that vibration is what we call the photon or particle of light. I am trying to make an analogy between this physical solution and the concept of love and light. Is this close to the concept of love creating light? Ra, you are correct. Question. Then I will expand a bit more on this concept. We have the infinite vibration of love which can occur. I am assuming at various frequencies. I would assume that it begins at one basic frequency. Does this have any meaning? 
Ra, each love, as you term the prime movers, comes from one frequency, if you wish to use this term. This frequency is unity. We would perhaps like to rather it to the strength than a frequency, this strength being infinite, the finite qualities being chosen by the particular nature of this primal movement. Question. Then this vibration which is, for a lack of better understanding, pure motion. It is pure love. It is nothing that is yet condensed, shall we say, to form any type of density of illusion. This love then creates by this process of vibration a photon, as we call it, which is the basic particle of light. This photon then, by added vibration and rotation, further condenses into particles of the densities we experience. Is this correct? Ra, this is correct. Question. Then this light which forms the densities has what we call color. This color is divided into seven categories. Can you tell me if there is a reason or explanation for these categories of color? Ra, this will be the last complete question of this session as this instrument is low on vital energy. We will answer briefly and then you may question further in subsequent sessions. The nature of the vibratory pattern of your universe is dependent upon the configurations placed upon the original material or light by the focus or love using its intelligent energy to create a certain pattern of illusions or densities in order to satisfy its own intelligent estimate of a method of knowing itself. Thus the colors, as you call them, are as a straight or narrow or necessary as possible to express given the will of love. There is further information which we shall be happy to share by answering your question. However, we do not wish to deplete this instrument. Is there a short query necessary before we leave? Question. The only thing I need to know is if there is anything we can do to make the instrument more comfortable or to help her on this contact. Ra, this instrument is slightly uncomfortable. Perhaps a simpler configuration of the body would be appropriate given the instrument's approving physical complex condition. I am Ra. You are conscientious in your endeavors. We shall be with you. We leave you now in the love and light of the one infinite creator. Rejoice, therefore, in the power and the peace of the one infinite creator, Adonai. Session 28, February 22, 1981. I am Ra. I greet you in the love and light of the infinite creator. I communicate now. Question. I may be backtracking a little today because I think that possibly we are at the most important part of what we are doing in trying to make it apparent how everything is one how it comes from one intelligent infinity. This is difficult, so please bear with my errors in questioning. The concept that I have right now of the process, using both what you have told me and some of Dewey Larson's material having to do with the physics of the process, is that intelligent infinity expands outward from all locations everywhere. It expands outward uniformly like the surface of a bubble or a balloon expanding outward from every point everywhere. It expands outward at what is called unit velocity, or the velocity of light. This is Larson's idea of the progression of what he calls space-time. Is this concept correct? Ra, this concept is incorrect, as is any concept of the one intelligent infinity. This concept is correct in the context of one particular logos, or love, or focus of this creator, which has chosen its, shall we say, natural laws and ways of expressing, mathematically and otherwise. The one undifferentiated intelligent infinity, unpolarized, full and whole, is the macrocosm of the mystery-clad being. We are the messengers of the law of one. Unity, at this approximation of understanding, cannot be specified by any physics, but only become activated or potential intelligent infinity due to the catalyst of free will. This may be difficult to accept, however. The understanding we have to share begin and end in mystery. Question. Yesterday we had arrived at a point where we were considering colors and light. You said the nature of the vibratory patterns of your universe is dependent upon the configuration placed upon the original material or light by the focus or love using its intelligent energy to create a certain pattern of illusion or densities in order to satisfy its own intelligent estimate of a method of knowing itself. Then after this you said that there was more material that you'd be happy to share 
but we ran out of time. Could you give us further information on that? Ra, in discussing this information, we then, shall we say, snap back into that particular method of understanding, or seeing that which the one, sound vibration complex, Dewey, offers. This being correct for the second mean of intelligent infinity, the potential which then through catalyst forms the kinetic. This information is a natural progression of inspection of the kinetic shape of your environment. You may understand each color or ray as being, as we have said, a very specific and accurate portion of intelligent energy's representation of intelligent infinity, each ray having been previously inspected in other regards. This information may be of aid here. We speak now non-specifically to increase the depth of your conceptualization of the nature of what is. The universe in which you live is recapitulation in each part of intelligent infinity. Thus you will see the same pattern repeated in physical and metaphysical areas. The rays or portions of light being, as you surmise, those areas of what you may call the physical illusion, which rotate, vibrate, or are of nature, that may be, shall we say, counted or categorized in rotation, manner, and space, time, as described by the one known as Dewey. Some substances having various of the rays in physical manifestation visible to the eye, this being apparent in the nature of your crystallized minerals, which you count as precious, the ruby being red and so forth. Question. This light occurred as a consequence of vibration, which is a consequence of love. I am going to ask if this statement is correct. Ra, this statement is correct. Question. This light then can condense into material as we know it into our density, into all of our chemical elements because of rotations of the vibration at quantized units or individuals of angular velocity. Is this correct? Ra, this is correct. Question. Thank you. I am wondering, what is the catalyst or the activator of the rotation? What causes the rotation so that light condenses into our physical or chemical elements? Ra, it is necessary to consider the enabling function of the focus known as love. This energy is of an ordering nature. It orders in a cumulative way from greater to lesser, so that when its universe, as you may call it, is complete, the manner of development of each detail is inherent in the living light, and thus will develop in such and such a way. Your own universe, having been well, been well studied in an empirical fashion by those you call your scientist, and having been understood or visualized, shall we say, with greater accuracy by the understanding or visualization of the one known as Dewey. Question. When does the individualization or the individualized portion of consciousness come into play? At what point does individualized consciousness take over working on the basic light? Ra, you remain carefully in the area of creation itself. In this process, we must further confuse you by stating that the process by which free will acts upon potential intelligent infinity to become focused intelligent energy takes place without the space-time of which you are so aware as it is your continuum experience. The experience or existence of space-time comes into being after the individuation process of logos or love has been completed and the physical universe, as you would call it, has coalesced or begun to draw inward while moving outward to the extent that that which you call your sun bodies have in their turn created timeless chaos coalescing into what you call planets. These vortices of intelligent energy spending a large amount of what you would call first density in a timeless state, the space-time realization being one of the learned teaching of this density of beingness. Thus we have difficulty answering your question with regard to time and space and their relationship to the, what you would call, original creation which is not a part of space-time as you can understand it. Question. Thank you. Does a unit of consciousness, an individualized unit of consciousness, create a unit of the creation? I will give an example. One individualized consciousness creates one galaxy of stars. The type that has many millions of stars in it, does this happen? 
raw. This can happen. The possibilities are infinite. Thus, a logos may create what you call a star system, or it may be the logos creating billions of star systems. This is the cause of the confusion in the term galaxy, for there are many different logos, entities, or creations, and we would call each, using your sound vibration complexes, a galaxy. Question. Let's take an example, the planet that we are on now, and tell me how much of creation was created by the same logos that created this planet. Ra. This planetary logos is a strong logos creating approximately 250 billion of your star systems for its creation. The, shall we say, laws or physical ways of this creation will remain, therefore, constant. Question. Then what you are saying is that the lenticular star system, which we call a galaxy, that we find ourselves in with approximately 250 billion other suns like our own, was created by a single Logos. Is this correct? Ra, this is correct. Question. Since there are many individualized portions of consciousness in this lenticular galaxy, did this Logos then subdivide into more individualization of consciousness to create these consciousness? Ra, you are perceptive. This is also correct, although an apparent paradox. Question. Could you tell me what you mean by an apparent paradox? Ra, it would seem that if one Logos creates the intelligent energy ways for a large system, there would not be the necessity or possibility of the further sub-Logos differentiation. However, within limits, this is precisely the case, and it is perceptive that this has been seen. Question. Thank you. I'll call the lenticular galaxy that we are in the major galaxy, just so we will not get mixed up in our terms. Does all the consciousness in individualized form that goes into what we are calling the major galaxy start out and go through all the densities in order? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and into the eighth. Or are there some who start up higher in the rank, so that there is always a mixture of intelligent consciousness in the galaxy? Ra. The latter is more nearly correct. In each beginning, there is the beginning from infinite strength. Free will acts as a catalyst. Beings begin to form the universe. Consciousness then begins to have the potential to experience. The potentials of experience are created as a part of intelligent energy and are fixed before experience begins. However, there is always, due to free will acting infinitely upon the creation, a great variation in initial responses to intelligent energy's potential. Thus, almost immediately, the foundations of the, shall we call it, hierarchical nature of beings begins to manifest as some portion of consciousness or awareness learned through experience in a much more efficient manner. Question. Is there any reason for some portions being much more efficient in learning? Ra. Is there any reason for some to learn more quickly than others? Look, if you wish, to the function of the will, the, shall we say, attraction to the upward spiraling line of light. Question. I am assuming that there are eight densities created when this major galaxy was created. Is this correct? Ra. This is basically correct. However, it is well to perceive that the eighth density functions also as the beginning density or first density in its latter stages of the next octave of densities. Question. Are you saying, then, that there are an infinite number of octaves of densities 1 through 8? Ra, we wish to establish that we are truly humble messengers of the Law of One. We can speak to you of our experiences and our understanding and teach-learn in limited ways. However, we cannot speak in firm knowledge of all the creations. We know only that they are infinite. We assume an infinite number of octaves. However, it is been impressed upon us by our own teachers that there is a mystery-clad unity of creation in which all consciousness periodically coalesces and again begins. Thus, we can only say we assume an infinite progression, though we understand it to be cyclical in nature, and as we have said, clad in mystery. Thank you. When this major galaxy is formed by the Logos, Polarity then exists in the sense that we have electrical polarity. 
We do have electrical polarity existing at the time. Is that correct? Ra, I accept this is correct with the stipulation that what you term electrical can be understood as not only the one, Larson, stipulated its meaning, but also in what you would call the metaphysical sense. Question. Are you saying, then, that we have not only a polarity of electrical charge, but also a polarity in consciousness at that time? Ra, this is correct. All the potentiality available from the beginning of your physical space-time is then being the function of consciousness complexes to begin to use the physical material to gain experience, to then polarize in a metaphysical sense. The potentials for this are not created by the experiencer, but by intelligent energy. This will be the last full question of this session due to our desire to foster this instrument as it slowly regains physical complex energy. May we ask if you have one or two questions we may answer shortly before we close. Question. I am assuming that the process of creation, after the original creation of the major galaxy, is continued by the further individualization of the consciousness of the Logos, so that there are many, many portions of the individualized consciousness creating further items for experience all over the galaxy. Is this correct? Ra, this is correct. For within the, shall we say, guidelines or the ways of the Logos, the sub-Logos may find various means of differentiating experiences without removing or adding to these ways. Question. Thank you. And since we are out of time, I will ask if there is anything that we can do to make the instrument more comfortable. Ra, this instrument is well adjusted. You are conscientious. I am Ra. I leave you, my friends, in the love and light of the one infinite creator. Go forth and rejoicing in the power and the peace of the one creator, Adonai. Session 29, February 23, 1981. I greet you in the love and light of the infinite creator I communicate now. Question. Is our sun a sub-logos, or the physical manifestation of a sub-logos? Ra, this is correct. Question. Then I am assuming that this sub-logos created this planetary system in all of its densities. Is this correct? Ra, this is incorrect. The sub-logos of your solar entity differentiated some experiential components within the patterns of intelligent energy set in motion by the Logos which created the basic conditions and vibration rates consistent throughout your what you have called major galaxy. Question. Then is this sub-Logos, which is our Sun, the same sub-Logos, just manifesting in different parts of the galaxy, or is it all the stars in the galaxy? Ra, please restate. Question. What I am saying is that there are roughly 250 billion stars somewhat like ours in this major galaxy. Are they all part of the same sub-logos? Ra. They are all part of the same logos. Your solar system, as you would call it, is a manifestation somewhat and slightly different due to the presence of a sub-logos. Question. Let me be sure I am right here. Our Sun is a sub-logos of the Logos of the major galaxy. Ra, this is correct. Question. Are there any sub-sub-logi that are found in our planetary system that are sub to our Sun? Ra, this is correct. Question. Would you give me an example of what I will call a sub-sub-logos? Ra, one example is your mind-body-spirit complex. Question. Then every entity that exists would be some type of sub or sub-sub-logos. Is that correct? Ra. This is correct down to the limits of any observation, for the entire creation is alive. Question. Then the planet which we walk upon here would be some form of the sub-sub-logos. Is this correct? Ra, a planetary entity is so named only as Logos if it is working in harmonic fashion with entities or mind-body complexes upon its surface or within its electromagnetic field. Question. Do the sub-Logi, such as our Sun, have a metaphysical polarity positive or negative, as we have seen using the term? 
Ra. As you use the term, this is not so. Entities through the level of planetary have the strength of intelligent infinity through the use of free will, going through the actions of beingness. The polarity is not thusly as you understand polarity. It is only when the planetary spheres begins harmonically interacting with mind-body complexes, and more especially mind-body-spirit complexes, that planetary spheres take on distortions due to the thought complexes of entities interacting with the planetary entity. The creation of the one infinite creator does not have the polarity you speak of. Question. Thank you. Yesterday you stated that planets in the first density are in a timeless state to begin with. Can you tell me how the effect that we appreciate as time comes into being? Ra, we have just described to you the state of beingness of each Logos. The process by which space-time comes into continuum form is a function of the careful building, shall we say, of an entire or whole plan of vibratory rates, densities, and potentials. When this plan has coalesced in the thought complexes of love, then the physical manifestations begin to appear. This first manifestation stage being awareness or consciousness. At the point at which this coalescence is at the livingness or beingness point, the point or fountainhead of beginning, space-time, then begins to unroll its scroll of livingness. Question. I believe that love creates the vibration in space-time in order to form the photon. Is this correct? Ra, this is essentially correct. Question. Then the continued application of love. I will assume that this is directed by a sub-logos or a sub-sub-logos. Creates rotations of these vibrations, which are in discrete units of angular velocity. This then creates chemical elements in our physical illusion. And I will assume the elements in the non-physical or other densities in the illusion. Is this correct? Ra. The Logos creates all densities. Your question was unclear. However, we shall state the Logos does create both the space-time densities and the accompanying time-space densities. Question. What I am assuming is that quantized incremental rotations of the vibrations show up as material of these densities. Is this correct? Ra. This is essentially correct. Question. Then because of these rotations, there is an inward motion of these particles, which is opposite direction of space-time progression as I understand it. And this inward progression then is seen by us as what we call gravity. Is this correct? Ra, this is incorrect. Question, can you tell me how gravity comes apart? Comes about. Ra, this that you speak of as gravity may be seen as the pressing toward the inner light love, the seeking towards the spiral line of light which progressed toward the Creator. This is a manifestation of a spiritual event or condition of livingness. Question. The gravity that we know on our moon is less than it is on our planet. Is there a metaphysical principle behind this that you could explain? Ra. The metaphysical and physical are inseparable. Thus that of which you spoke, which attempts to explain this phenomena, is able to, shall we say, calculate the gravitational force of most objects, due to the various physical aspects such as what you know as a mass. However, we felt it was necessary to indicate the corresponding and equally important metaphysical nature of gravity. Question. I sometimes have difficulty in getting a foothold into what I am looking for. I am trying to seek out the metaphysical principle, you might say, behind our physical illusion. Could you give me an example of the amount of gravity in the third density conditions at the surface of the planet Venus? Would it be greater or less than Earth? Ra. The gravity, shall we say, the attractive force which we also describe as the pressing outward force towards the Creator, is greater spiritually upon the entity you call Venus due to the greater degree of success, shall we say, at seeking the Creator. This point only becomes important when you consider that when all of creation in its infinity has reached a spiritual gravitational mass of sufficient nature, 
the entire creation infinitely coalesces, the light seeking and finding its source, and thusly ending the creation, and beginning a new creation, much as you considered the black hole, as you call it, with its conditions of infinitely greater mass at the zero point from which no light may seem as it has been absorbed. Question. Then the black hole would be the point at which the environmental material has succeeded in uniting with unity or with the Creator, is this correct? Ra, the black hole which manifests third density is the physical, complex manifestation of this spiritual or metaphysical state. This is correct. Question. Then when our planet is fully in fourth dimension, will there be greater gravity? Ra, there will be a greater spiritual gravity, thus causing a denser illusion. Question. This denser illusion, then I would assume, increases gravitational acceleration above the 32 feet per second squared that we experience. Is this correct? Ra. Your entities do not have the instrumentation to measure spiritual gravity, but only to observe a few of its extreme manifestations. Question. This I know that we can't measure spiritual gravity. But I was wondering if the physical effect could be measured as an increase in the gravitational constant. That was my question. Ra, the increase measurable by existing instrumentation would and will be statistical in nature only and not significant. Question. Okay, as the creation is formed, as the atoms form as rotations of the vibration which is light, they coalesce in a certain manner sometimes. They produce a lattice structure which we call crystalline. I am guessing that because of the formation from intelligent energy of the precise crystalline structure, that it is possible by some technique to tap intelligent energy and bring it into the physical illusion by working through the crystalline structure. Is this correct? Ra. This is correct only in so far as the crystalline physical structure is charged by a correspondingly crystallized or regularized or balanced mind body spirit complex. Question. I don't wish to get off a subject of no importance, but it is difficult sometimes to see precisely in what direction to go. I would like to investigate a little bit more this idea of crystals, how they are used. I am assuming then, from what you said, that in order to use the crystal to tap intelligent energy, it is necessary to have a partially undistorted mind-body-spirit complex. Is this correct? Ra, this is specifically correct. Question. There must be a point at which the removal of distortion reaches the minimum for use of the crystal in tapping intelligent energy. Is this correct? Ra, this is correct only if it is understood, shall we say that each mind-body-spirit complex has a unique such point. Question. Can you tell me why each mind-body-spirit complex has this unique point of distortion ridding? Ra. Each mind-body-spirit complex is a unique portion of the one creator. Question. Then you are saying that there is no single level of purity required to tap intelligent energy through crystals, but there can be a wide variation in the amount of distortion that an entity may have. But each entity has to reach this particular point of what I might call energizing the ability. Is this right? Ra, this is incorrect. The necessity is for the mind-body-spirit complex to be of a certain balance, this balance thus enabling it to reach a set level of lack of distortion. The critical difficulties are unique for each mind-body-spirit complex due to the experiential distillations, which in total are the, shall we say, violet ray beingness of each such entity. This balance is what is necessary for work to be done in seeking the gateway to intelligent infinity through the use of crystals or through any other use. No two mind-body-spirit crystallized natures are the same, the distortion requirements, vibrationally speaking, are set. Question, I see. Then if you are able to read the violet ray of an entity, to see that ray, is it possible to immediately determine whether the entity could use crystals to tap intelligent energy? Ra, it is possible for one of fifth density or above to do this. Question, 
Is it possible for you to tell me how an entity who has satisfactorily achieved the necessary violet ray qualifications should use the crystal? Ra, the gateway to intelligent infinity is born of, shall we say, the sympathetic vibration in balanced state accompanying the will to serve and the will to seek. Question. Can you tell me precisely what the entity would do with the crystal to use it for the purpose of seeking the intelligent infinity? Ra, the use of the crystal in physical manifestation is that use wherein the entity of crystalline nature charges the regularized physical crystal with this seeking, thus enabling it to vibrate harmonically and also become the catalyst or gateway whereby intelligent infinity may thus become intelligent energy. This crystal serving as an analog of the violet ray of the mind, body, spirit in relatively undistorted form. Question. Is it possible for you to instruct us in the specific use of crystals? Ra. It is possible. There are, we consider, things which are not efficacious to tell you due to possible infringement upon your free will. Entities of the Confederation have done this in the past. The use of the crystals, as you know, include the use of healing for power and even for the development of life forms. We feel that it is unwise to offer instructions at this time, as your people have shown a tendency to use peaceful sources of power for disharmonious reasons. Question. Is it possible for you to give me an example of various planetary development in what I would call a metaphysical sense, having to do with the development of consciousness and its polarities throughout the galaxy. In other words, I believe that some of these planets develop quite rapidly into higher density planets, and some take longer time. Can you give me some idea of that development? Ra, this will be the final query of the session. The particular logos of your major galaxy has used a large portion of its coalesced material to reflect the beingness of the Creator. In this way, there is much of your galactic system which does not have the progression of which you speak, but dwells spiritually as a portion of the Logos. Of these entities upon which consciousness dwells, there is, as you surmise, a variety of time-space periods during which the higher densities of experience are attained by consciousness. Is there any short query before we close? Question. Is there anything we can do to make the instrument more comfortable? Ra. You are conscientious. The entity is well aligned. I am Ra. I leave you now in the love and light of the one infinite creator. Go forth, therefore, rejoicing in the power and the peace of the one infinite creator. Adonai.